In this tutorial, we're going to work on a photograph that has a number of problems. Here's a 20-year-old snapshot of my wife and daughter on a beach in Florida, and you can see it's got a number of, it's got lots of issues here. The horizon isn't straight, the picture has too much contrast, they're shoved to the left-hand side of the frame, the color's off a little bit. So we're going to go through step by step. We're going to straighten the photograph, we're going to enlarge the canvas, we're going to copy the right side of the picture and move it to the left. We're going to crop the photograph. We're going to convert the background layer to a smart object. In which we're then going to apply the shadow highlight filter as a smart filter. We're going to match the color. We're going to use the clone stamp to get these ugly people out of here and, and make the edge match at where we've cloned. We're going to sharpen the fixture, picture. We're going, to apply, we're going to spot the dust spots and we're going to apply the dust and scratches filter hopefully to this thing and so we should get a pretty good idea of a photograph that has a number of complexities so let's get started step number one is to straighten the photograph the horizon tilts and to do that I'm going to come over here and select the ruler tool now you may wonder why we're using the ruler tool, but you'll see in a moment. I'm going to drag a line along the horizon, the width of the photograph. And then I'm going to go to Image, Rotate Canvas, and I'm going to choose Arbitrary. And when I do that, you'll notice that automatically the direction and the number of degrees is entered in the Rotate Canvas dialog. So when I click OK, and bing! My horizon is now nice and straight. If I drag a guide down, you can see that it touches the horizon and it does it pretty well. Let me get rid of the guide because we really don't need that guy there. The next thing I want to do is enlarge the canvas. I want to crop this side and I want to take it over to this side. So what I'm going to do is go back, go to Image, and I want to choose Canvas Size. Let me drag that into the screen here so we can see it. And because I want to enlarge the canvas to the left, I'm going to click on this, this box over here, and you see how the arrows change so that the new canvas is going to be added to the left-hand side. How much do I need? Well, for right now, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to make the width, oh, it's at 4 inches. I'll make it 6 inches, which is, should be more than enough for what we need to do. Canvas extension colors white to match my background. And when I click OK, bingo. And let me hit Apple Zero to fit that onto the screen and drag it over here so you can see what we have. And now I've got plenty of space over here to take this part and put it on the other side. To move this over, I am going to grab the rectangular marquee and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make a selection on the left, on the right hand side, I'm sorry, of the canvas. And I'm actually going to rotate this selection and so I can get a little bit more of the, of the sand and surf over here. And to do that, I have to go to the Select menu and I have to choose Transform Selection. So I'll click on Transform Selection. When I do that, you'll notice that I get Transform Tools and I can rotate this, bo this box and I can move it over and get it where I, and I rotated it a little bit too far, but that's okay. I can always bring it back, get it on there. Now, I don't have to be real, real accurate here, but I do want to go all the way up to the sky and I want to come all the way down to the bottom here. And if you snap, you see how this is snapping at the bottom? Hold down the control key and that will keep it from from snapping and, and make sure you release the mouse then before you release the control key and I got this when I get this thing set to where I want it and I'll bring that over a little bit more and I'll, I'll drag this over a little bit more too and I got that set there and I'm gonna press the enter key or the return key and now I want to put this on a layer there are a couple of ways that I can move this over one way would be to hold down the the command key on a Windows on a Macintosh or the control key and the option key or the alt key and I can hold down the shift key and just drag it over and that works pretty well and that's kind of a really quick way to get that over there and I just want to bring it over here 
and just to a point where I'm gonna I don't want to touch the sleeve I just want to set it down there I have a floating selection okay it just sort of floats there if I, I hit the deselect you know Apple and D or control D to deselect those pixels are now pasted down here now there's another way to do that and let me go back I'm going to use the history palette here to go back a few steps and I want to go to free transform selection put that over there and you know the history palette is a great way to get yourself out of trouble I can also put this on a new layer if I want to if I want to keep these pixels alive and editable I can make a new layer so instead of holding down the uh, command option or the control alt key on a Windows machine and dragging this over here I'm going to go to layer new via copy which is command or control J on a Windows machine command J on Mac control J on Windows layer via copy so I don't want to cut that out of there and you can see now that I have this these pixels on their own separate layer and now I can take the move tool and I can grab those pixels and I can move them over here and now I can play with them a little bit and one of the nice things again if it's snapping I want to hold down the uh, control key Either this works on Windows or Mac and get that guy lined up there and here's a place where I might want to have that guide up there and just to make sure that I get that guy nudged down there. I don't want it to be too low or too high and you can use the up and down arrow keys on the keyboard and then to get rid of the guide again to hide the guide it's command semicolon or control semicolon and let me blow this up just a little bit I'm holding down the space bar and the command key on the Mac or the control key on Windows and I will use the up key just there and I'm just lined up now it doesn't match very well okay but it will and I can take this guy at this point and I can actually now flatten this if I want or I can leave it live here as a layer I'm gonna flatten it now that I moved it and I'm gonna do that with the palette menu and I'm just gonna click on flattened image right now so that all becomes one picture okay so we've enlarged the canvas we've copied the the right side pasted it on the left side it doesn't completely match but we're gonna work on that in a few minutes um, and now the next thing I want to do is crop this and get it to back to snapshot size so I want to take the crop tool and I'm going to drag in here and I'm going to make an image now I can decide how big I want this to be um, if I just click and drag and I can adjust the endpoints like so okay uh, let me I want to hit the I want to click up here I want to cancel you can I can also enter a width like say I want this to be four by six inches I can type four in there and height is six because snapshots often come from the lab as four by six and now I can drag in, across here and I can move this around I don't have a four by six inch snapshot of my wife and daughter and I can get that set up in there and that looks pretty good and they're in the center and I'm going to hit the enter key or the return key I could also click the checkbox up in the options bar and you'll notice yes I've got a little white line down a little white triangle down here but if I bring this up too far I crop the hand off and I don't want to crop the hand off so I'm going to just going to bring that down and leave that where it was and I'm going to hit the return key and my photograph is cropped so now they're in the center of the picture we'll get we'll take care of the line shortly but the horizon lines up out there and that's important okay the next thing I want to do is reduce the contrast now the best way to reduce contrast is to go image adjustments shadow highlight the problem however with doing it like right here on this layer because I have to have pixels to use the shadow highlight tool is that I alter the pixels on the background layer and I don't want to do that just in case I want to change my mind or I want to go back and fix things later so I'm going to just click over here and the first thing I'm going to do is convert my background to a smart object now what does that mean a smart object means that it is no longer directly editable in Photoshop 